The village in it with a map and a plan No place too tidy for this determined man Crossing the counties one by one You'll see in every English corner a bit of history Welcome back to Harrogate again people and to a village which is kind of the anomaly compared to all the others you've seen so far this week. All the others have been tiny, tiny places. This one's got a bit more meat on its bones. Behind me there you can see a van, a red van. That's not a postman's van, that's actually to do with a shop which is kind of behind this bus shelter that I'm uh, stood in right now. That belongs to Spokey Doki Bikes and you can find them here in Wixley. Wixley, Quicks Clearing. Today in Harrogate we come to Wixley, a large village just to the north of the A59 and east of the A1M. It lies on the route of Rudgate, the Roman road we've been learning about just recently. The Romans would have marched through Wixley when they were in Britain, because Rudgate was one of the main routes they used to get to Aldborough or Isurian Brigantum. To the Normans it had the much more exotic sounding name of Kuchislaga, but by the 14th century it had been renamed Quixley after the Lord of the Manor. For many years, Wixley was famous for cherries, which were originally cultivated by the friars from the Priory of Knaresborough. In later times, they were sold in London at Covent Garden. Cementing its status with the fruit, Wixley used to hold an annual cherry-themed celebration on the first Sunday in August. Many of the houses in Wixley are reminders of those times. Here, there's a cherry house, a cherry cottage, and a cherry tree farm. Now, cherries may not be as important as they once were, but Wixley is still a village that knows how to grow things. It's here where Johnson's Nurseries are based, for example, and they are probably the largest wholesale nursery business anywhere in the UK. Elsewhere, Wixley has some other interesting bits of history, including that of a former hospital on the road to Cattle. There's also a fine church and a small hamlet with a connection to a major former landowner. Oh, and you can get yourself a bike or two here as well. Spokey dokey, let's go. We start with a drive around a small housing estate to the south of the main village, off the road to Cattle. Now on the face of it, this doesn't appear to be anything of note. However, assume that and you'd be making a massive mistake. These houses are all built on the site of a former hospital. In 1905, the hospital was opened on the hilltop south of Wixley. It was known as the Inebriates Reformatory, but it rapidly became a dumping ground for orphans, waifs and strays for whom society could find no other place. Eventually, it became a mental hospital. Apart from being displaced, many of the patients, in inverted commas, had little wrong with them and were allowed out to help on farms at harvest time. They were known locally as nibs, a slang term that was short for inebriates. Many would die in the hospital and now lie in unmarked and forgotten graves in Wixley's churchyard. As for the hospital, it closed in 1993 and the site now forms this attractive residential development. It's known as Wixley Gate. Our main walk starts at Johnson's Nurseries to the east of the village's pub. Johnson's are a three-generation family business who've been supplying the nation with millions of plants for over a century. They grow and supply their own trees, shrubs and plants. They handle in excess of six million items annually. This is only one of Johnson's sites. They have five spread across North Yorkshire, covering a massive 200 acres. The Wixley site is their head office, where the business operates from primarily. Let's move on up the street to the pub. This is the Anchor, an old village pub that's had a number of extensions over the years. Although you can have a quiet drink in here, it's very much food-led, with a carvery available seven days a week. 
its original chorus low ceilings and exposed brickwork, whilst its furnishings are typical of a traditional English pub. Decor-wise, it includes old watercolours, coaching prints, copper pans and novelty teapots. Quite fancy that. The Anchor has what may have originally been a second room just off the main one, which is laid out for dining. The bar counter is of brick and behind that is a modern extension, providing more dining space and the carvery. On the next corner is a cul-de-sac called The Cobbles. Down there is the base of Spokey Doki Bikes, founded by a pair of cycle lovers. Although they were dormant for a while, likely due to the pandemic, they're now back in business. So if you're a cyclist in the area, they are your go-to. In front of the Cobbles is Wixley Village Shop. This was originally opened as a community venture and it's now run by Helen Tessieman, who also runs a sister shop in Martin Cum Grafton. The shop itself is owned by the parish council. A vital village asset, the shop stocks Vokes pies, which are made right here in Wixley. It also has a wide range of groceries and supplies including fruit, vegetables, bread, milk and newspapers, as well as a selection of wines and beers. Let's have a look around the crossroads now, where all of this is located. Okay, so Wixley is effectively two villages in one, or two areas which join together to form one big village, should I say. You've got the area around the pub and the nurseries and the shop and Spokey Doki and all that kind of stuff. And then you've got the other end, which has got the village hall, the church, and a few other bits and bobs. And linking the two is the High Street, which is a, a long, straight road. Behind me there, just, you can see our next landmark. That's an old chapel. Let's check it out. This chapel was once used by the Primitive Methodists. It opened in December 1866 and was part of the Knaresborough Circuit. The chapel was built after many years of Wixley both wanting and needing one, but the issue of finding a suitable plot of land was the sticking point. Once built, it had a capacity of around 100 people. It cost £130 to build, and contributing to that were several donors, including a Mrs Atkinson, a Mrs Ibbotson, and a Miss Anakin. Farmers and others led the materials, whilst the ladies organised two fundraising tea meetings. The chapel was one of the last in the area to close. In 1911, only four remained. The others were at Spofforth, Arkendale and Hayer Park. Now we've reached the northern end of the village and first up here is the War Memorial. This is a stone column with a cross set on a stone step base. Its dedication is carved in stone on the front plinth. The names of the fallen are listed on two metal plaques. The head of the cross is carved with a very simple pattern with an almost Celtic style. The dates 1914 and 1919 are carved on the shaft. The whole thing is set within a small gated garden. There are 22 names on it in total. Nearby is the old post office, that's this White House virtually directly opposite the memorial. Let's move on to the village hall. The village hall was built in 1935 on the initiative of the local Women's Institute. This is used regularly by many societies, including the Wixley Badminton Club, who are based within. With a well-equipped kitchen, a cosy supper room, a stage and a main hall, the Village Hall is the ideal location for any event in Wixley. It hosts dances, parties, quiz nights, whist drives and bingo, as well as the meetings of the Parish Council. It also stages the annual Wixley Pantomime. The main hall is licensed to accommodate up to 120 people. Then there's also the community lounge, which is a flexible smaller room with direct access to the kitchen. It also has a snooker room on the first floor with a full-size table for members of the Wixley Snooker Club. Oh, and there's also a parish notice board on the wall too, so tick it off people.
Now we're around the back of the hall where there's a children's playground with slides, climbing frames and a roundabout. This is all complemented by a large playing field fitted with five-a-side football nets. Speaking of sports, Wixley has a thriving cricket club with two teams playing in the Weatherby League. Now effectively this northern part of the village is a, a big loop so we're going to exit the village hall and head towards the church now to sort of head around that loop in an anti-clockwise fashion and then head back down the high street to where we began. Here we are at the church, which can be found up a drive at the northernmost point of the village. The church was originally dedicated to St James after being renovated in the 19th century. It's now the Church of the Ascension, and it's got a bit of history to tell. A church has looked over Wixley for over a thousand years. It was recorded in the Doomsday Book, but that building was burned and destroyed by marauding reavers from the Scottish borders in the 13th and 14th centuries. The present church was rebuilt in the 14th century, and it's Grade 2 listed. The tower, with battlements, houses six bells from 1667, whilst the gilded clock displays a telling message to the community and the world. It also has a huge marble sarcophagus containing the bones of the former Lord of the Manor, which were transferred here from a private chapel within Wixley Hall. That's the fine Elizabethan building over the high wall adjacent to the church. The Victorian restoration was undertaken by Sir Giles Gilbert Scott. As part of the renovation, the existing mullioned windows were replaced with stained glass. So this is the field at the back of the church and there's a public right of way that runs all the way across it. You can appreciate here just how high up into the hills you are above the village at this point because we have climbed a, uh, a shallow hill to actually get here. Now keep this area in mind around the church because later on when we go to Tancred it'll become important. For now we need to turn around and complete our circuit of this northern part of the village. To complete the route it's simply a case of finishing the circuit. Even through the driving rain, which was getting increasingly heavier, Wixley still looks magnificent, doesn't it? Let's just enjoy these last few steps before we move on. Okay, we're almost at the end. The uh, War Memorial is behind the camera and there in front of you here, you can see like a little uh, recessed area of bungalows. And that's effectively, effectively gonna bring the main village to a close. From here, all I've got to do is walk back down the high street. It'll take me back to the car. We're then gonna get in the car and drive out to Tancred, which I mentioned at the churchyard. And we'll see what that's all about. Tancred shares its name with the Lord of the Manor who's buried in the church. Christopher Tancred, born in 1689, was noted particularly for a trust established by the terms of his will. In the 17th century, the Tancred family replaced the Quixleys and became lords of the manor, living at Wixley Hall. The last of the line was Tancred, whose portrait hangs in Christ's College, Cambridge. Tancred was the second son of Christopher Tancred Sr., also of Wixley, and his second wife Catherine, the daughter of Sir John Armitage of Kirklees. His father was, in 1685, the High Sheriff of Yorkshire, and was the master of the Harriers to William III. His great-grandfather, Sir Richard Tancred, was knighted by Charles II for his services and sufferings during the Civil War. 
Tancred claimed to have some training as a lawyer, but after his father's death in 1705, he spent most of his time in Wixley performing the duties of a county justice. With his character of law reformer, Tancred combined that with being a racing man and a horse dealer. He spent part of his time in Newmarket, where he possessed a small property. That was ultimately left to Christ College, Cambridge, for the purpose of endowing an exhibition. Tancred died at Wixley in 1754, leaving the instruction that his body should not be put underground. This was literally obeyed, as his coffin stood for some time in the hall of his house before being contained in the sarcophagus in the chapel, which was then moved to the Church of the Ascension. Tancred's trust, for which he's best known, is quite a complex thing to understand. In 1721, he settled his property in trust to be used by Christ's and Gonville and Caius College, Cambridge, the president of the College of Physicians, the treasurer of Lincoln's Inn, the master of the Charter House, and the governors of Chelsea Hospital and the Royal Hospital Greenwich and their successors. His will also stated that £50 a piece was to be paid to 12 young persons of such low abilities as to not be capable of obtaining an education. Four to be educated in the study of divinity at Christ College, four in the study of physics at Gonville and Caius, and four in the study of common law at Lincoln's Inn. Provision was also made that these 12 persons should live at Wixley Hall, and the building was to be known as Tancred's Hospital. It closed as such in around 1872. So what of Tancred the settlement then? Well, the Tancred estate was bought by the former West Riding County Council in 1920, and amid much controversy, its four good farms were split up into 50 acre small holdings to provide a living for men returning from military service in World War I. Today, under the modern North Yorkshire County Council, most of these small farmhouses have been sold and the land is being absorbed into larger land ownerships, as it was 100 years ago. Now that doesn't mean the place is any less important than it once was. Far from it, actually. Most people who venture down this dead-end track are doing so to visit a very popular farm shop. At the heart of Tancred Farm Shop is the butchery, because it's been run by pig farmers for over 30 years. They sell their own reared produce on site, as well as regularly attending farmers markets throughout Yorkshire. They also make and sell over 40 different varieties of award-winning sausage, as well as pork pies, dry cured hams, gammon, bacon, salami and homemade burgers. Their fresh beef comes from their own grass-fed pedigree Lincoln red cows, whilst Tancred pigs are bred to produce succulent pork with extra marbling, designed to be the best around. Sheep and goats are also reared at Tancred too, so whatever meat you're putting on your plate, you can be guaranteed of its traceability. So whether you're doing your weekly shop or looking for something for a special occasion, Tancred Farm Shop is the place to go. And speaking of places to go, we need to move on to the next one. Now that's it for this current run in Harrogate, we've completed another full week at TVI Towers. Tomorrow it's the weekend, and we're off into the Derbyshire Dales. Now just before I go, remember, this video is part of a huge project to visit every civil parish in England. That's more than 10,000. These routes are pre-planned, and due to time constraints, I can't cover every detail or walk down every street. Please don't complain if this video missed something out. I pronounce names how I choose to. I am very aware that local dialect may vary, and I don't take kindly to criticism about this. You've been warned. It's impossible to know everything too. If this video was terrible, make your own. If you're a regular watcher of The Village Idiot, you're not the only one. If you've got a small business, why not use my videos to advertise it? Leave a comment below if you're interested. And finally, thanks for watching this episode, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe if you've enjoyed this episode, and share it with your friends and relatives. It all helps to keep this mission going. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out. <laughs>